You guys want to race? I think you'll win. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you guys having a good day? Yeah. 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 It's a great day. Just a tad. <laughs> it's getting up there. But you guys have a good day. Well, guys, time to go kill some time before Cycle Gear opens so that I can go get a new helmet. This one's getting a little old. The pads are a little worn out. So, time to get a new one. It's kind of hot today crazy because it's been like 70 degrees all week. So I guess while we're doing this I can do like a like an intro to me. I hate talking at lights because then people look at you so weird like what the heck's wrong with you guy? You like to talk to yourself? Should you even be riding a motorcycle? The very first motorcycle that I had was a 2003 Honda Shadow 1100 VT and that was a really fun bike. Really heavy, probably not quite the bike to learn on, but it was a very fun bike. And then after that, when I moved to Arizona, I got a really good deal on a uh, CBR F4. It had a blown motor, it was a stunt bike and stuff, you know, so idiot i bought that bike wasn't running or anything i think i paid like four or five hundred bucks for it uh put an f4i motor in it had somebody redo it that was my first sport bike and i had that for a little while so i got rid of that bike when i moved back to oklahoma and then fast forward a couple more years down the road i was working at a dealership and i got a really killer deal on a 2007 Street Bob Dyna uh, Harley Davidson FXDB. Gorgeous blue color. After the FXDB, my next bike was a Honda CBR 500. Long story short, a buddy needed some money. He had a CBR 500 when I moved back to Arizona from Oklahoma. And so. I bought that from him to kind of help him out. I had never ridden a 500 before, so I figured I'll see what it's like for a little while while I keep an eye out for what I really want. I no longer have that bike, which is what will be explained later. And then fast forward to now, we have good old 2006 636 Cali. Look at that, I need gas. Petrol. Is that a nose? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with some people, man? just standing in the middle of the way that's weird we are back on the road so anyways why I started riding simple enough my dad rode my whole life my dad's my best friend he's the one who got me into bikes I've been riding I think I was like 13 years old when I got that Honda Shadow. Now minus, I've been riding before that. I, I grew up riding dirt bikes out in the country, out in Oklahoma when I lived out there. Motorcycles were just a little bit more top end and a little bit more freedom for me, you know what I mean? So this is the route that I took. I've been in two motorcycle wrecks and uh, that's why we're gonna have another uh, vlog where I explain, you know, what kind of gear I use. And why it's so important to wear your gear. Like, you never know what can happen. I was that guy that understood 
motorcycle wrecks happen all the time and I was like, you know, what are the odds that it's really gonna be me? When I was 19 years old, I was leaving my dealership on that Harley and uh, a guy from the opposite side of the road did an illegal U-turn, passed a median, cut me off and I had to slam my brakes in the middle of the road. Didn't really have time to react on a 55 mile an hour highway out in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. I got, I got hit by a one ton truck. I got hit by a one ton truck and I ended up with a collapsed lung, a ruptured spleen. I broke all of my left ribs. Um, ironically, except for the top two, they had to dislocate those to give me a chest tube. Long story short, it was a really bad day. I flatlined twice from the collapsed lung. Uh, I had all my gear on, you know, that all the damage that I sustained was internal. So, even then, you know, it's so important to wear gear, but gear can't always save you. But it just makes sense to wear your gear, always. Both times that I got hit, I had some pretty gnarly marks on my helmet. <laughs> Whereas if I wasn't wearing a helmet, I wouldn't be here. Or I'd be in a lot of pain, one of those two. Either way it goes, wear your gear. Uh, the second time that I got hit was on my uh, CBR 500 and that's because of some who tried to hit and run me into the wall on the 51. Uh, so uh, the second wreck was actually just this September of uh, 2017. Um, just crazy reckless driver. It was an intentional case. I mean, he looked right at me and tried to hit me into the 51 wall and run away. And I uh, thank God that we live in an open carry gun state because uh, we had a guy in a big lifted Chevy chase that guy who hit me down and bring him back to the scene at gunpoint. So needless to say, we were able to get that all wrapped up. Ended up having to take him through insurance and get all that. And even the worst part is, is that guy should be in prison for what he did to me. And yet, because of insurance and because of the outcome that we wanted, we had to ride a really thin line with insurance about whether or not he intentionally did that. Because if it was intentional, insurance wouldn't have to pay me anything because they don't cover intentional fault. How up is that so uh, pretty much had to tell the guys you know no I know he saw me he hit me and then he tried to run because he was scared not he intentionally tried to kill me and then run because then he would be you know getting fumbled in a place where he deserves to be but no we have stupid laws and dumb insurance companies. Why do I still ride? This is my safe haven. <laughs> Believe it or not, after those two wreck stories, this is my safe haven. You would never know. This is the place where I concentrate the most. This is the place where I don't have to worry about, well, I mean, I, I, I do have to worry about everyone else, but you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about other people's feelings and thoughts because it's not like being in a car with passengers where you still have to kind of cater to their feelings and, and cater to, you know, what their thoughts on things are. On a motorcycle, I don't have to do that, even with a passenger, because I can't freaking hear you. So it's pretty cool for me. I don't mind it. I don't have a Bluetooth earpiece. The only reason I'm co contemplating getting one for our recent group rides and stuff and the YouTube channel. I wanna, wanna be able to hear people and talk to people. Maybe you guys will be able to hear them too. I think this girl wants to race. And where to start with bikes? Uh, you know, in my opinion, 
I think the best move was learning on dirt first. I started on dirt bikes and four wheelers and I was very young. Um, you know, four wheelers are great because you don't have to worry about the balance. You can learn how to shift through your gears, use the clutch. I mean, heck, even knowing how to properly shift through your gears, that's going to extend the longevity of your, your uh, whatever it is that you have anyways, you know, because I know people that they can, they can drive a manual car, doesn't mean that they can drive it good, they end up replacing a clutch and then a transmission and 8 to 10,000 miles, and that's not even good, you know, like, you should be able to go 120,000 miles before you have to replace a, a transmission. You should be able to go like 80,000, 90,000 miles without having to replace your clutch. Um, it's all about hitting those right shift points and stuff like that. That's why I think that learning on a four-wheeler is good because then you have four wheels. You don't have to worry about learning the balance yet. You learn how to properly shift through your gears, properly ride that vehicle uh, or machine, whatever you want to call it. And then from there, you get onto like a dirt bike, you know, still a pretty aggressive vehicle. Honestly, still an aggressive vehicle. Just not as fast as like, say a sport bike or a 1200cc cruiser. So with that being said, learning on that dirt bike, you get to learn the balance. You get to learn all that stuff. And then even learn cool stuff like wheelies <laughs> in the dirt and not have to worry about hurting other people there's just a lot of stuff you don't have to worry about um, being able to learn on the dirt out in the open you don't have to worry about messing up somebody's property messing up your bike on the pavement you know just common common sensual things like that sensual common sensual that is not even where i was going with that anyways it's a good idea to learn in dirt to go from dirt to street that's how i did it and i couldn't be more comfortable on the street and i was instantly comfortable when i went from the dirt to the street another main factor about being safe on any motorcycle is being comfortable because if you are scared you're gonna mess up it's almost inevitable every single time if you're scared you, you do things that you wouldn't normally do whenever you're just chill, when you're confident. When you're confident, you don't mess up because you know you got it. You know you're gonna do it right. You don't even have to worry about that stuff. When you're scared, you have the thought of, oh, what if this happens or what if that happens? What if I can't do this? What if I can't do that? So, you know, I don't know, just start wherever you're comfortable and I guess you go from there. That's just, this is just my advice. This is how I learned, how I got started, um, the experiences that I've had, you know. So, you can never make a full decision off of somebody else's disclosure on something. I should have known that this is where I'll find all the bikers at, it's down at Cave Creek. <laughs> This is where everyone goes for the scenic route. I mean, it's beautiful down here. It is. Potato, 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 potato. <laughs> I miss my Harley. Buffalo Chip. I used to ride bulls here. And then I swapped going out, uh, started going out to Roadrunner more. I think we should get us a jet ski soon. That'll be fun. I can do some motor vlogging on the jet ski. <laughs> this still counts, right? Right now, it's time for some in and out, baby. It's lunchtime. Well, guys, now we're waiting for some food at in and out. We got the new helmet and another new surprise that I will be showing you guys here shortly. But right now, it's time for a cheeseburger. Hi, how are you? I am fantabulous. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hi. Thank you.
All right, guys. Well, here's the surprise. 09R1.